So here in the United States, we're no strangers to alternative fuel vehicles. In fact, the hybrid electric vehicle is actually one of the best selling uh, alternative fuel kind of cars in the States. Now, one new type of technology that was introduced a few years ago is the all electric plug-in uh, plug electric vehicle. Nissan basically pioneered the first mass market produced uh, vehicle with its LEAF back in 2011. It was introduced at the same time as the gasoline electric Chevrolet Volt and it's the two are considered to be uh, direct rivals. Today, I'm taking a look at the 2014 Nissan LEAF. Now, this vehicle uh, is actually getting ready to be redesigned along with the upcoming Chevrolet Volt both of them will be changed for 2016. Until then, let's take a look at the current generation since this is actually uh, the best-selling all-electric vehicle in the United States. Now, you can see the design of the car is definitely polarizing and odd. Um, and it's like that for a reason. I mean, this car's design needs to be slippery. It's very aerodynamic. The front of the car is definitely the most polarizing element. Uh, those bug-eye headlights that basically bulge up like a zit on uh, your face uh, are definitely weird looking from certain angles. Now, thankfully, uh, my SL tester does have the uh, standard LED headlights. All the other lower trim leaves, if you don't get the quick charge package on the SV, will have just standard halogen headlights. LEDs are important because they're low power consumption. Very important for a vehicle like this. Now, one thing you need to remember about the Leaf, this is a true zero emission vehicle. It doesn't have a gasoline engine like the Chevrolet Volt does um, or a plug-in hybrid Prius. Uh, this car uh, basically, uh, I mean, Nissan likes to remind you that it's a plug, it's a, it's a all electric car with a zero emission badges. It emits no tailpipe emissions. Uh, at the same time, it's kind of fun to drive around a car like this. I mean, it, this is something that uh, Tesla owners get to enjoy, uh, and you get to if you buy a Leaf, you get to have that courtesy at a much lower price. Now, uh, one of my favorite things to do with this car is basically smile and wave past all those gas stations. At the same time, I have it in the back of my mind that um, the Prius driver, for example, will have the last laugh when I run out of electric juice. However, uh, in today's modern world, there are a lot of plug-in stations throughout most of the areas, especially here in the DC area where we're located. There's hundreds of plug-in stations, so um, charging this thing is not necessarily uh, hard to do. Um, the, really, the Leaf will give you about 85 miles on a single charge. They did improve that for 2013 from 75 miles of the earlier iterations of this car. Now, the Leaf only comes as a hatchback design, uh, and it's a very tall hatchback. It gives you a lot of interior space in here, and I'll go into the interior roominess when we get inside uh, the rest of this vid the video. Now, the side profile of the car, um, it looks like your traditional hatchback. Uh, the 17-inch wheels on my tester come standard on the SV and up. They look very nice. Uh, they were updated uh, for 2013. That's the last time the Leaf got any styling changes here and there. Now, coming to the back of the car, um, it looks like a traditional hatch. It's less polarizing. I like these LED taillights uh, that are standard on every model. They look unique. They look good. Uh, the Leaf basically comes in three trims. There's the base S, uh, the mid-level SV, and then my tester, of course, which is the SL. And you can see another styling element here. Um, there's no obviously there's no exhaust tips. There's no gas engine that burns gas in this car And then the SL uh, SL trims like my tester will have this a solar roof panel above the spoiler now that actually does not charge the um, Batteries the lithium-ion batteries uh, that power the electric motor only charges the 12 volt battery that powers all your accessories But nevertheless, let's get on the interior and see uh, just how weird or different it is uh, compared to a conventional car so the interior of the uh, 2014 Nissan Leaf looks pretty Pretty conventional when you first open the door. I really like these leather bucket seats on the SL Tester. They're very comfortable. Unfortunately, you do not get power adjustable seats available on any Leaf. I kind of think that they should add that, especially at this, this price point. You can see here, um, Basically, it's got its own unique steering wheel, its own unique center stack, but it, overall, it looks very traditional. Now, stepping inside the car, uh, it's a pretty easy step in as well. I mean, that high roof gives you plenty of clearance to get in this car. Uh, it's not as high as a traditional SUV, of course. Now, uh, shutting the door, uh, you can see here, uh, this is the key for the vehicle. It's Nissan's intelligent push button start key. Uh, it's standard on every leaf, even the base trim level. So basically, all you have to do is put your foot on the brake and then push the button to start the engine. Now this is where things get wonky. Of course, you're not gonna hear any kind of noises of an engine starting up because this car doesn't have an internal combustion engine. It's just an electric car. And, and aside from that little whirring noise and all the flickering lights in here, all the pretty stuff, um, it's it's basically conventional looking. Um, now, one indication you're gonna know that this car is ready to drive is it's gonna show you this little green car icon right there in the uh, instrumentation. That's basically gonna tell you that the car is ready to drive. Uh, of course, the instrument panel is just a sea of weird 
displays. Um, on the left side right there is your battery temperature display. That's always going to be fluctuating based on the exterior temperature. On the right side, that's your your basically your charge meter, uh, how much how much juice is in the battery. Um, it also gives you your distance to empty. And then of course the top portion right here, those weird rings. Um, that's basically your power meter. It's going to show you how much power you're using uh, from the battery, or if you hit the brakes and they in the, all the balls go to the left, um, it's going to show you regenerative braking. Now the um, center display over there is interchangeable based on pushing this button here. You can cycle between your average uh, trip computer, stuff like that, settings, your charge times, average economy, stuff like that. Um, it's a very useful bit of information uh, here, but up here is really where you're going to find your speedometer. This actually reminds me of a 8th generation Honda Civic, to be honest, but um, to the right, clock, temperature, and then to the left, that's actually your eco gauge. It grows trees when you're driving really efficiently, and when you drive extra efficiently, the trees grow fast faster. I kind of think they should be growing leaves. I mean, this is the Nissan Leaf, but technically that's a Ford hybrid thing. Now looking at the rest of this interior, um, the dash and, or at least all the materials in here, they fit well. Um, fit and finish is solid. It's all hard touch plastic, unfortunately. And at this price point, I'm not gonna really complain much because they invested a lot of money in the technology of this car, the battery. So of course, a really high quality interior is not gonna be a strong suit, but nevertheless, it's solid in here. Uh, the door panel materials, they are hard touch here. I kind of wish this was soft, but it is leather stitch right here. Um, and then it'll be cloth on the lower trims. The window is automatic up down for the driver only. All the other windows are just, are not one touch. Now looking at the center stack, here, it's kind of like a little bit of a floating design. It's interesting. Um, and this is the standard head unit that you'll get, you're will you going to get on uh, all the Leafs. Uh, the SV and up will give you standard navigation system. To go to the nav screen, you push this map button right here. And it gives you your traditional uh, Nissan Infiniti uh, bird's eye view map display. It's getting a little bit old, a little bit crunchy, to be honest. Um, now, one thing this car does give you is a 360 degree camera system. This is their around view monitoring system. It's part of a premium package that you can roll in on the SV and the SL trim for about a thousand bucks that rolls in the Bose audio. It's very nice. I mean, I really like how it gives you distance and trajectory for the front and for the rear when you put this car into reverse. It gives you, uh, again, a very nice view and then you can hear it actually sounds like it gives you that little chime, that little backup chime, because again, this car doesn't have um, any noises. Now, one thing that uh, you're probably gonna notice is this controller. This controls the direct drive one-speed transmission. It looks weird for one. Um, here's basically how it works. Uh, for park, you just push it for park right there. For reverse, you put, push it this way and then go up, and that puts it into reverse. For neutral, you just push it here and hold it until it goes into neutral. And then for drive, come back for drive. And then if you do it again, it, it gives you B for, for regenerative braking. It's basically going to coast and be a little bit um, harder on the brakes to give you more juice. Now, let's go back to this infotainment display. Um, for one thing, you're probably noticing a couple things here. You're gonna have your, your normal media sources here, uh, such as AM, FM, XM. You'll have your Bluetooth audio, Bluetooth streaming audio, Pandora, stuff like that. Um, now, a couple of buttons here you'll probably notice. There's a zero emission button right here. When you push that, that's important for a vehicle like this. It's going to give you your driving range, your energy info, and then, of course, your nearby charging stations near your current location. When this car's battery gets low, it'll basically automatically find uh, charging stations and tell you the battery is getting low. It'll warn you several times to keep you from looking like an idiot when the car goes dead on you on the road uh, to tell you, look, there's lots of charging stations here. Go and plug the, the damn car before it, it dies. So that's really important especially in an electric car like this, um, you will have to deal with range anxiety for the first few times. Now, uh, another couple things you're going to notice about this car is car wings. What the hell is car wings? That's basically Nissan Leafs, uh, the in the telematic system for the Leaf. You can download, download an app on your smartphone that'll communicate with the car system. You can uh, basically adjust the charge thing versus your or with your phone. It'll tell you how much energy you're using. Um, you can connect to uh, a, uh, some, a live operator if you want about finding charge stations about asking questions. So Car Wings is basically just the in-car telematics. You even have points of interest search uh, by Google. So it's an interesting name. I'm not really sure about the name, but it's important for a vehicle like this. Uh, the system itself is definitely on the older side. You don't have the Facebook uh, apps that newer the, the newer Nissan products have. And even when you push this button, the whole system tilts down like from the early 2000s it will reveal the CD port and then the SD card slot from the map. So I will be looking to see what Nissan updates this car with, with um, the redesign design model with their new infotainment system. Overall, this isn't bad. I think it's a good system and it's important for a vehicle like the Leaf. You're going to have other nice features in here. You'll have heated seats. Uh, you'll have a heated steering wheel. Of course, this right here opens the front of the car to charge the, to charge it. And of course, you can also do a charge timer. You can lock the system in place when you have the vehicle charging so nobody can f um, mess with it. 
Now, the climate control in this car is interesting. Uh, there's actually a heat button here, which is, of course, essential for an electric car. Uh, what I like about this car in the cold is it can be freezing cold outside and you turn on the heat, the heat is instantly hot. There's no internal combustion engine to actually make or to actually have to warm up. So it's just instantly hot. The one thing you're going to notice when I turn on the heat, the range drops. It drops pretty significantly, actually, by four four miles because this car is not is the older technology. A lot of the newer um, full all electric cars have a separate system for the heating, so it doesn't actually sap power from the uh, lithium ion battery. So with the Leaf, I would recommend if you guys are trying to extend your range, just use the heated seats and the heated steering wheel as opposed to the heater. It's going to really suck up a good amount of power. Now, one of the reasons the Leaf is such a great seller is uh, the amount of space this car has. It's a very roomy interior, even the back seat. I did cram uh, three people back here, which does get a little bit of tight, uh, three adults, but uh, two people will be just fine. You can see the legroom is pretty good. Step in is also great. Uh, the floor is a little bit on the higher side because this is where all the lithium ion batteries live underneath the floor. Uh, you do have heated rear seats back here, so that's a really nice touch. One map pocket. The leather itself uh, feels good. There's no armrest right here. And then when you uh, shut the door, the materials are basically a hard touch plastic, but it is a soft touch right there uh, where you're going to rest your elbows. Now, thankfully, because of that hatchback design, the Leaf is a very practical car. It's a practical car to live with every day. You're looking at about 25 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Fold them down, it's about 30 cubic feet of space, so it's a little bit less than some of its competitors. Uh, for example, the Focus Electric offers a tad more, the Fit EV offers a tad more. But nonetheless, the space is good, the floor is low, it goes in deep, the seats fold down 60-40. Uh, now, this is the actual trickle charge system. The Leaf has three different modes to charge. There's the quick charge, the normal charge, which is with the 240 volt, and then this is the 110. 120 volt it's going to basically plug into your household outlet uh, from this connector here uh, on this charge it's really going to take about 20 hours so i would recommend using the 240 this is really just uh, for emergencies if you're at a friend's house and there's no uh, 240 volt charger now opening this compartment right here is going to reveal the most crucial element of a plug-in electric car like this. Uh, the Leaf actually has two charge ports, most will actually have it. This bigger one right here is the quick charge port. This is standard on the SL. Uh, you have to go for the SV with the quick charge package to get this, or the S with the quick charge package as well. This, one, this is basically the level 3 charger. It's, it will provide 480 volts uh, to the battery to charge it in 30 minutes. 80% in 30 minutes is what they say. You're not going to use that most of the time. Nissan is, actually doesn't even recommend it uh, for battery longevity. So what you're going to be using is the the standard one right here. This is the 240 and the 120 volt outlet. You can tell because it's smaller. Um, with the 240 volt, which is basically the same system that your dryer uses, it's going to charge the car in three to four hours. Or if you're going to use the trickle charge, which is the, the standard household plug-in, that's going to take about 20 hours. That one's really only used for emergencies. You're not going to be charging this thing at your house overnight. You don't really have the time to do 20 hours to uh, charge the vehicle. Now checking out underneath the hood of the Nissan Leaf, there really isn't much to see. Uh, this isn't even the actual electric motor. This is really just the inverter system. All your fluids are accessible here, uh, your 12 volt battery. Um, it's an 80 kilowatt electric motor with about 48 lithium ion batteries that live underneath the front seats. Now that really doesn't mean much to most people. What you need to know is it makes 107 horsepower and 187 foot pounds of torque. Now that torque number is basically what uh, you're going to want to notice. This is an electric car so it produces all of its torque at zero RPM so it's a very torquey machine and it's fun to drive when you actually get, get hard on the, uh, the accelerator pedal. Now, fuel economy, the EPA rates this thing, I believe, at 126 MPGE. That's the miles per gallon equivalent of how much power it consumes. That really doesn't mean much to most people. I believe the, the higher, or the lower the number, the better. But um, what you basically need to know, it'll go 84 miles on a single charge. And I was actually able to verify that. So uh, if you guys drive efficiently with the eco mode on, uh, with the AC or heat turned off, this thing will go that full distance. If you guys use all that and you drive like an ass, uh, excuse my language, it'll probably lose about 10 miles of range. Um, the car is front wheel drive. It weighs about 3,500 pounds, 3,400 pounds. It goes through that single speed direct drive transmission. Now the car is actually running, of course. There's no noise. When you drive at low speeds, below 15 miles an hour, uh, the Leaf will make kind of an electric whirring noise to let pedestrians know uh, that you've got a vehicle coming. But anyways, let's get on the road and see how this all electric vehicle drives, shall we? So driving the Leaf, is it as weird as you may think it will be? Um, the one thing about the car that makes it so successful is it kind of handles and feels like a normal car, aside from the fact that it's quiet and there's no noise in here. Uh, but it's actually a quite fun experience. So let's get on the road and show you exactly what I mean by that.
Now, because I'm driving an, an all-electric vehicle, a zero-emission vehicle, this is supposed to be a green car. I'm going to drive it in a green fashion. In fact, that's the first thing I did when I got in this car. I left it in eco mode. Uh, I'm trying to drive as efficiently as possible. I want that little eco meter there to grow as many trees as I want as it can and which is weird because I feel like it should grow leaves again this is a leaf now when I first you know started off in the car and left it in eco mode this thing is unbelievably slow it literally feels like I'm dragging an anchor uh, behind me on the car just because you know you put your foot down you expect this thing to be you know torquey and it's not you put you you really have to floor the accelerator to actually get it to go so I was a little bit perplexed as to why this car is so slow I mean I drove the Focus Electric, this car's main competitor, and it definitely feels a lot more powerful. So that confused me when I first got into the wheel of this car. However, I started prodding around the interior and I found the eco button, which is right here on the steering wheel. Uh, I basically pushed that button and put my foot down and wow, this thing really actually took off. It really uh, feels like an overgrown golf cart. And it's almost like a supercharger effect when I push that button. The eco mode really slows everything down to try to save power. I mean, that's kind of expected for an electric car like this. Um, and you really don't expect it to be fun, but when you have a, the eco mode off and plant your foot down, it really just shoves you back in the seat. Almost 200 foot-pounds of torque uh, will basically do that. And even though this car weighs about 3,400 pounds, it feels light on its feet. And it's one of the reasons why the Leaf is so popular with consumers. It feels like a normal car, honestly, when you are driving it around every day. If you listen really closely, you can hear the little electric motor whirring noise that uh, the system will produce just to let pedestrians know that uh, you have an electric vehicle approaching. Now, basically, driving the car normally, uh, <laughs> The car drives really nice, and one thing about the Leaf is it's really quiet. Nissan stressed that when they designed this car uh, four years ago, uh, and it's important for a car like this to be quiet. You can see here the crappy roads around the DC area. Um, the Leaf rides well. Actually, the ride quality is one of the best things about this car. It rides better than the Focus Electric, which is the car's main competitor. Um, it's just a very planted, very solid ride. I mean, the weight of all the batteries certainly helps. Uh, the car feels very secure and uh, stable when you go down the road, and quietness is also a big thing there is very little wind and road noise it's very hushed of course there's no engine noise occasionally you're gonna hear a little bit of that a little bit of that electric motor whirring noise which is kind of cool actually it's it's a unique different experience and I don't mind uh, the noises at all of course being an enthusiast I do miss the noise the fire that uh, a gas engine will make that roar that exhaust note but um, you know, this is a kind of a car that I can enjoy as well, especially you can, uh, for the type of vehicle it is, it's just very, very unique, the driving position, the driving experience. Now, um, going down the road here on this back road, the handling of the Leaf is also actually not bad as well. The steering, of course, is electric, but uh, it doesn't really give you much feedback, but the precision is there. Uh, the car will change directions uh, really well, and it does have some body lean, but again, the car is playful. It's not a sports, sports car by any measure, but you can have fun, you know, saving the planet by driving this car and then of course passing by all the those gas stations uh, in the process now speaking of which one of my favorite things to do in this car is the weird looks of this thing definitely attract stares even though the leaf has been on the market for a few years now Prius drivers are one of the few drivers that stare at this thing uh, tremendously and one of my favorite things to do is when they're not looking stick my tongue at them just to taunt them even though of course they will have the last laugh when I do run out of electric juice but um, the leaf uh, is pretty quick to recharge it's the standard recharge time that the most of this class expects um, actually if you guys bought a leaf a 2011 and a 2012 leaf it had the slower 3.3 kilowatt charger that basically the the 2015 leaf s has if you don't get the, get the quick charge package that will take seven hours to charge as opposed to the three to four uh, when Nissan updated the charger system it gave us the um, higher output electric motor charger now interior space is also a really good thing. This thing feels really roomy, despite the fact that on the outside, the Leaf is about the same size as your average uh, compact car. It's about 175 inches long. It is taller, uh, but the space in here is just tremendous. The view, the visibility is also good, um, and it's just a really easy car to live with and drive every day. Now I have my foot to the floor there, and you can see the electric charging little this power display is going all the way to the right, showing that I'm being a pig and I'm using all the electric juice. Now when you do that, this car will hit 60 in about 9.9 .9 seconds, which is downright slow. Prius drivers are basically gonna be neck and neck with you uh, if you're trying to drag race, drag race one at the light. Now compared to its competition, the Leaf is on the slower side. The electric motor doesn't have as much power. 80 kilowatts is definitely less. The Leaf, I'm sorry, the Focus Electric has about 107 kilowatt electric motor. The Fit EV is a little 
little bit more. Um, the Focus Electric does go less miles on a single charge, so um, that's where the Leaf has a little bit of advantage, but I really hope for the next generation Leaf, Nissan beefs up the electric motor. I think that um, it could use more power. Now, let's be honest here, most people in this class are just gonna feel that instant torque. Now, only when you're getting this thing started does it feel sluggish, but when it's already going and you just put your foot down, the torque just pushes you back in the seat and the Leaf feels, um, it feels pretty powerful. Uh, but really when you get started, that's where it feels slower. The uh, Fit EV uh, and the Focus electric, electric is about a second quicker to 60. If you guys are gonna drive the newer, the new BMW i3 or the Mercedes-Benz B-Class Electric or the the Spark Electric, the Spark EV, um, those are much quicker. The BMW i3 will hit 60 in about six and a half seconds, which is uh, one of the quickest in terms of an electric vehicle. Only the Tesla uh, Model S is quicker than that. So coming up to the conclusion of this review, I mean, now it's one of my, it's really only the second EV that I've shown you guys. And I have to say, um, electric vehicles, full electric vehicles are starting to impress me. Um, they can, successfully replace a gas engine if we can basically uh, improve the charge tires, make it 30 minutes or less to charge to a full power from a 240 volt, and then make the range longer, similar to basically what the Tesla Model S will go. It'll go about 265 miles on a charge. Now, um, in its current state right now, the Leaf is a second car. This is a car that you're going to only drive to and from work and around town. You can't take this thing on a long trip. It doesn't have the range for it. it you won't be able to charge it fast enough. You won't be able to find those superchargers around your area, there, which well, you know, while as we go on through time, um, they will become readily available, uh, but the Leaf is really just a second car with an 84 mile range. Now, for those of you who are looking for just a commuter car um, and you also have a gas car as your second vehicle, this is a great choice. And one of the reasons that make the Leaf uh, the best selling uh, electric vehicle on the market is the fact that you can get this thing uh, at a really great price. Now. The Leaf actually starts at just under $30,000 for the, the base S trim. That was actually a new trim for 2013. Um, now my particular tester, the SL model, uh, is the most expensive one. This is stickered for about $37,500 uh, for everything. Basically my tester has the premium package which is $1,500 extra. It's about $35,900 for the SL that gives you all the features that you want. Now that sounds like a big chunk of change, especially for a vehicle like this, but you have to remember there's a $7,500 tax credit from the feds uh, when you buy this thing. Of course you're gonna get that at the end of the year and then certain states will give you an additional tax credit maryland for example currently is offering three thousand dollars in a cash rebate that you're going to get from them in the mail if you buy this thing um, but really the electric car like this the best thing to do is lease one nissan offers an incredible lease still in this car right now you can lease one for 199 a month for 36 months with about 2400 dollars due at signing that's going to be about a 10,000 mile uh, a year lease now that price that's incredible that's basically the same amount of money that you're gonna lease a mid-size sedan for, like an Altima, for example. Um, so it's one of the reasons why the Leaf sells so well. For example, if you want a comparable Fit EV, um, it's gonna be about 260 a month, uh, and you cannot actually buy the Fit EV. Uh, that's one of the reasons why the Leaf is so, you know, a really great seller. It's readily available in all 50 states, and you can actually purchase this thing. You don't have to lease it for three years and then give it back to the manufacturer so they can study all the things that may have gone wrong with it. But with all that said, at that kind of price, I think the Leaf is a bargain, to be honest, for a vehicle that gives you a very unique driving experience that's comfortable, that's quiet, that's easy to live with. Uh, if you guys um, have readily available charging stations, I will recommend that you spend that $2,000 roughly um, before the credits that you're gonna get from the state uh, to have a 240 volt charger installed at your home. It's really important to truly enjoy this vehicle to be able to, have, to just charge the car at the 240 volt as opposed to the trickle charge, which is the 110, the standard household outlet. That's, nobody has 20 hours to charge their vehicle, let's be honest here. Anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed uh, my overview of this 2014 uh, Nissan Leaf. If you guys are looking at the 15 model, there's really nothing different about the car aside from the standard wheels on the SV and up. Uh, there's a new, um, a little bit more aggressive regenerative braking on the 15 miles as opposed to this uh, 14 mile that I'm driving. But um, I think the Leaf's a great choice uh, for an EV. It's one of the least expensive offerings. And if you're looking for something, just a commuter car that's different, they, where you don't have to literally use gas anymore on your commute to work, uh, make sure you check this vehicle out. Uh, it's definitely worth a look. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next review.